Hey everyone, I'm the Drink Pro, and today I'm drinking grain whiskey from Navazos Palazzi. What's up everyone, Drink Pro here yet again. Thank you so much for joining me. Please subscribe, click the bell for notifications, share this video with your friends. Please join me on the Patreon, patreon.com slash the drink pro. It's the best way you can support me. Or just hit me up and send me some samples. I'm on every social media platform you can think of. Probably not true, but if there's one that you're on that I'm not on, hit me up and I'll join it too. Today, I'm doing a great video collabing yet again with Vine and Table. Big shout out to Vine and Table. Joseph and Dave up at Vine and Table have been really helping me out. They've sent me home with several different samples, a lot of different spirits. I'm kind of excited to show you guys some of the spirit world. I focus so much on whiskey, but there's a lot of cool things outside of whiskey that I want to share. Today, I'm sticking with grain whiskey with a very interesting backstory, especially for people who know a little bit about sherry. If you don't know anything about sherry, don't worry. I'll teach you as much as I can. I'm the drink pro. That's what I'm here to do. I'm going to tell you straightforward. This bottle is not pretty. <laughs> I don't like the design on this bottle. It's not well designed aesthetically. But that's because the person who designed this bottle cares about one thing. He cares about amazing artisanal spirits. Nico Palazzi, who runs PM Spirits, focuses almost entirely on sourcing and creating wonderful artisanal spirits. In fact, his website says, quote, we give a fuck about artisanal spirits and we do it exceptionally well. To me, that says everything you need to know about the guy. He's got a brash attitude. He's not going to fuss around with all the BS. He wants to focus on making wonderful artisanal spirits. Now, Nico Palazzi actually initially got his name in the world of spirits at all by becoming very uh, in tune with cognac. He was sometimes referred to as Captain Cognac for a number of years. I've read several interviews with this guy. He's such an interesting character, but he's so hyper-focused on making good spirits. It's really what you want, in my opinion, from somebody who's building a, a brand for spirits. Some people might not have any point of reference for this. If you've ever heard of Mike Drop Bourbon, PM Spirits is behind Mike Drop, Nico Palazzi is behind Mike Drop, that might give you some point of reference to understand where this guy's coming from. Now you'll notice when I've talked about this whiskey, it's not just Grain Whiskey Palazzi, it's Grain Whiskey Navazos Palazzi. Navazos is actually a brand that makes several different wines, uh, and particularly sherry is one of the things that's being incorporated into this whiskey. So what happens is a grain whiskey is made that's mostly corn, and this is all being done in Spain, by the way. It's, the, the grains are grown in Spain, it's distilled in Spain, it's aged in Spain, and it's bottled in Spain. This is Spanish product. So the grain is made into a mostly corn-based whiskey and aged in Spain, but it's aged entirely in freshly dumped sherry barrels. But it's not just any sherry. It's a special kind of sherry that's used for these barrels called Palo Cortado. I hope I'm saying that right. Palo Cortado. It's actually one of the rarest sherries, in part because you can't really make that sherry. Now what does that mean? Well, essentially it means that there's a passive process by which regular sherry can become Palo Cortado sherry. And for years and years people didn't really understand it. Now a lot of uh, wineries have perfected the art, they have special cellars where they can make this product. A lot of people would say like something weird has happened to a regular sherry and then they put that barrel sort of aside. Historically it's a lot like an Oloroso sherry uh, but there are this important differences in the process and the tasting and I won't get too far into that because that's just the barrel. Once the sherry is dumped out of that barrel it's filled with this grain whiskey and for the entire aging process this grain whiskey that's mostly corn is aged in this sherry barrel. Before I get into the tasting notes I'll just make a note that this whiskey was bottled at cast strength 53.5 percent alcohol and it's a relatively small run. Uh, this is bottled 166 out of 300 so it's a pretty small run this is basically a single cask pour i'm looking forward to trying it i've never had something age in a palo cortado barrel and it's a pretty uncommon barrel so it's not surprising that it's not commonly used to age whiskey more importantly a lot of grain whiskey that's majority corn that i taste is from america and that's rarely entirely aged in a wine barrel a lot of finishing happens They'll finish things in Oloroso Sherry, but they almost never, that I've heard of, actually age start to finish in a wine barrel. I've heard of that in Scotland, not really much in America. So this is a very interesting pour. It's kind of a whiskey nerd's dream in terms of the creation that's going on here. And that's totally in line with what we would expect from Palazzi. That's the kind of thing he does. He's trying to make these interesting artisanal spirits and see what he can put up. Like I said, I'm super excited to taste this, guys, because uh, it's really going in a different direction 
than anything I think I've ever had before. Now I'll tell you what, honestly, looking at this whiskey in this glass, I'm amazed how thin it is. Usually something that's, uh, you know, 53.5% alcohol is going to have more legs than this. This is very thin. It's got a beautiful color to it, but that's just an, an observation that I had. Whew. What is happening there? Oh, wow. Okay. <laughs> this is not what I expected on the nose at all. It smells like burnt, uh, oh God. Burnt marshmallow. It really smells like burnt marshmallow. God, I'm trying to get past that burnt marshmallow note and I'm really having trouble. It is just pervasive. It smells exactly like an overcooked marshmallow. Not like a brown marshmallow, like a marshmallow you burnt the hell out of. If I get behind that burnt marshmallow, I'm really trying to. There's like hints of this waxy vanilla note. <laughs> I actually think sneezing helped me open up my sinuses a little bit so I can smell it better now. <laughs> I'm starting to get those grain notes. The fact that it's a, a grain whiskey and it's mostly corn is starting to really show up on the nose. Yeah, pecan pie. I'm getting this sort of brown sugar, pecans, cinnamon, butter. It's so buttery. Oh, wow. That's so interesting to me. Like, it's amazing how much these whiskeys open up in the glass. That's something that I just, I, I wish, I wish everyone in the world could sit there and nose a whiskey for 10 minutes and tell me it doesn't change. If you can smell things, you'll know it's changing in front of your eyes or in front of your nose. But when I first poured this, it smelled just straight up burnt marshmallow. That's all I got. And now I go back to it, I can find hints of that burnt marshmallow note. I can hit, you know, there's hints of this char in there. There's hints of this sweet, you know, candy marshmallow quality. But there's so much more going on. Digging into it, it's like buttered popcorn now. Maybe burnt popcorn. There's this weird charred note that I'm, I'm just struggling with. It's very confusing to me based on the description of what is in this. Corn is becoming more and more prominent. I'm understanding why they put on the back of the bottle that it was predominantly corn. You can smell the corn. Yeah, and it went from this burnt marshmallow into this buttered popcorn. Now it's becoming more of a caramel corn. I might just sit here and nose this for a while. I can edit, you know, my sitting around out very easily. Getting coffee, leather, tobacco, a lot of these really interesting notes. I'm still not getting much fruit on this, which really surprises me considering it's from a sherry cask. You know, I would think, you know, again, it's a sherry cask of a kind of sherry I've never experienced before. But I always think of sherry as dark fruit. Sherry and dark fruit are just married in my mind. And so this has spent its entire life, not finished, its entire life in a sherry cask. And yet I really don't get sherry on the nose, not in the traditional sense. The only fruit notes I get are maybe just a hint of green grape and a little bit of almost a citrusy uh, tropical fruit, maybe like a citrus coconut, just, but again, just a hint. Beautiful toasted oak, and I'm getting some almond extract now as it kind of quiets down. Some of that burnt marshmallow quality is getting quieter and quieter, and it becomes this sort of extract component. It reminds me of an extract. And I think the woodiness is starting to show up a little bit more. It's very, very cool. This this is a wonderfully interesting pour. I'm very curious to see how it tastes. I've been burned so many times before on beautiful noses with terrible whiskeys that I'm always skeptical. And I want to say, hold on a minute, do I actually like the nose? Okay, that's fine. But that's not what I want from a whiskey. I don't buy a whiskey to smell it. I buy whiskey to taste it. So I need that to match or at least be somewhere in the right ballpark. I wanna feel like I'm enjoying what I'm drinking and what I'm smelling all at the same time. Let's give this a taste. Oh, that's so interesting. <laughs> Whoa, oh man, <laughs> that is crazy. That is an amazing whiskey. This will expand some people's palates right here. This pushes your understanding of whiskey in a really fun way. Super sweet right off the bat. Immediately I get really incredibly sugary sweet, almost like caramel, like a caramel candy. And then there's this weird bitter sour note. It's, you know what it is? It's, it's the old grape mash. It really, you can, you can sense that it's been in a wine barrel because you get this sort of sourness from like a soured grape. You get um, a little bit of bitterness, a little bit of the skins. And then after that subsides, the, the aftertaste in your mouth is kind of like a very sweet cinnamon roasted almond or a pecan. It's like cinnamon roasted pecans. And then you get this toasted oak and it just sort of slowly fades away. 
but the sweetness lingers the whole time. I think that's what I'm most surprised about, is the sweetness lingers the whole time. That's very uncommon in my experience for something that makes this much change and goes this deep into the oak world. It's got such interesting balance. That is a challenging pour. That takes you on a journey. I'm quick to praise whiskeys that are sweet, that are fruity, and that take you on a journey. Uh, that is kind of all in my wheelhouse. That's what I'm looking for from a really good whiskey. Not always true. There are some exceptions, particularly when you look in the Isla world. I like some interesting scotch that does some really peaty stuff. Um, I like some interesting Japanese whiskey that's more delicate and sort of takes you on a quiet journey. But this stuff has my mind in the single grain world, predominantly corn, so I'm in the bourbon world, really. And it's just, it. this is a great whiskey to take a bourbon drinker international. If you want a bourbon drinker to explore an Oloroso sherry, but they're not digging the sherry flavors, give them this and say, just sit with this. Because they're gonna take a sip and they're gonna go, oh no, they're gonna go, oh, that weird sourness, it's awful, it's terrible, it tastes like sour grapes and bitter skins. But it goes away. And not only does it go away, then there's a return of these other traditional flavors for a bourbon drinker. The sweet caramels, the toasted oaks, exactly what you want from a really good sweet bourbon. So this is a really cool demonstration of the back and forth between sweet bourbon into this very clear sherry barrel finish component and then back again. It's hard for me to believe that water is going to make any difference uh, for the better. I put in too much water. Let me put in more whiskey. Well, right off the bat, the water quieted down that burnt note. On the nose, it's just straight marshmallow now with water. The sherry notes that I don't particularly care for in this pour, that little bit of sour grape, that little bit of bitter skin, they're more prominent when you add water to it. And what becomes less prominent is that interesting sweetness at the beginning and toasted, nutty, oaky deliciousness at the end. All the things that I like get quieter and all the things that I'm kind of on the fence about uh, get louder. Overall, I think it's a really cool fusion of classic whiskey flavors and classic sherry flavors. It's doing something that a lot of whiskeys don't do when they have sherry finishes or when they're, you know, aged in sherry casks. A lot of times those whiskeys are trying to make a marriage. They're trying to give you both the sherry flavors and the whiskey flavors concurrently. And to me, this doesn't do that. And, and I'm super happy that it doesn't do that. Usually that's what you want, but not today, not here. This goes both directions and takes you both ways and it has a back and forth. That's not something you're gonna get from hardly any pours. I gotta say I commend Nevados Palazzi. This is a great single grain whiskey. This is just great. Um, <laughs> you know, I don't want to oversell it. I don't want people to be like, oh, he's working on the vine and table, so he's fucking in their pocket. No, I'm not. They sent me this whiskey. They didn't tell me what to say about it. I'm just freaking blown away by how interesting and different and good this is. I can't recommend it enough if you want to take a journey. But don't serve this to your friends who aren't used to whiskey. Don't serve this to your friends who aren't ready to take a journey. This is not the beginning of the night whiskey. This is not the uh, let's just sit around and have fun whiskey. This is the, hey, I got something for you. I got something cool. This is crazy. You should try it. This is crazy, right? Taste it. That's how I would sell somebody on this pour. That's what I'm going to say when I buy a bottle to have other people taste it because they're going to not understand how to deal with it. I already drank everything, but I may have to pour some more even though I got other videos to shoot. You all keep drinking like professionals though. Cheers.